This question deals with a 45-year-old Caucasian male brought to the emergency department with palpitations and fatigue. He has never had symptoms like this before and his past medical history is not significant. He smokes one pack per day and consumes alcohol only occasionally. His blood pressure is 110 over 70, heart rate is 120 and his rhythm is irregularly irregular. After initial treatment with IV digoxin, his heart rate drops to 82 per minute and remains irregular. So after we gave him digoxin, his heart rate dropped to 82 from 120, but the rhythm remained irregular. Now, which of the following best explains the effect of digoxin observed in this patient? Now, first of all, let's talk about how digoxin works. I'm so sorry about my lack of um, direction in terms of uh, the picture. But anyways, so digoxin, what digoxin does is it blocks the sodium potassium ATPase directly. So this is going to be directly blocked by digoxin. As a result, the sodium calcium exchanger is also blocked indirectly. Indirectly, that is also going to be blocked. As a result, there is going to be accumulation of calcium intracellularly. And, and this increased calcium is going to cause it to contract, contract the, contract, the, uh, contract the muscle for a longer amount of time without being depolarized. Another thing that is achieved by digoxin is digoxin also increases parasympathetic activity through the vagus nerve, okay? So that is also achieved by digoxin. Okay, so that's a general overview. Now let's look at the options. So there is A, B, C, D, and E. Let's see which one it is. A says delayed after depolarization. Now there is delayed after depolarization in digoxin. Because of this increased calcium accumulation inside the cell, it accumulates and accumulates and accumulates and later on at one a point comes when it when it leads to ventricular tachyarrhythmia. See, we used digoxin to stop a AFib and one of the toxicities of digoxin is, is ventricular arrhythmia because of this increased calcium. So it does happen with digoxin, but that is not the ideal answer. That's not why what is being asked here, which of the following best explains the effect of digoxin observed in this patient and what is happening in this patient. This patient has decreased heart rate. The decreased heart rate is not due to increased calcium or after depolarization, right? I mean, it does happen with digoxin, but this is not what's happening in this patient. So very, be very careful when you're answering a question. So that's not the answer. Increased parasympathetic tone? Yes, increased parasympathetic tone is the reason his heart rate is going down. So that is, that is, my, that is one of the choices. So I would think of that, that as an ideal choice, but let's see what, what about the other choices. Choice C said that decreased action potential duration. Decreased action potential duration. It's not really the duration, it's the decreased action potential. I would say it's not, it has nothing to do with the duration. It's not increasing the plateau phase or anything. So again, that is not the ideal choice. D, decrease atrial refractoriness. It has nothing to do with atrial refractoriness. It has to do with sodium pot potassium ATPase block. Again, that is not the ideal choice either. E, increase ventricular contractility. Yes, digoxin does increase ventricular contractility. That's true, but this patient has decreased heart rate. So let's answer the question. Let's answer what is happening to this patient. And in this patient, the decreased heart rate is because of parasympathetic tone. So the answer is going to be choice B.